Hello, a very good morning to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, talking to all of you on this Remembrance Sunday. Sunday, the 13th of November, 2016. Now, the reason I'm dressed as I am is because it is Remembrance Sunday. And one asks the question, what does remembrance mean to you? Because in just under one hour's time, at 11 o'clock, the nation shall go silent. At 11 o'clock on Friday, the 11th hour of the 11th day, the nation fell silent because we were remembering. And one asks ourselves, yes, the world leaders always appear at remembrance. Everybody appears at remembrance, but what does it mean to me? So I thought this morning, in uh, the course of uh, explaining that, of course, we're on at 10 o'clock tonight sharp, I would talk a little bit about remembrance with you uh, just before the silence at 11 o'clock. Over the years, I've attended many, many remembrance services. And I've tried to, when I was touring as a young actor, to reach as many different places as possible. So I might be standing at a humble war memorial in a tiny, tiny village. Or I might be standing at the Cenotaph in London. And either way, there were people who had been affected in some way by the acts of war. But what does remembrance mean to me? I was brought up in a household where, in actual fact, the household had suffered a lot from World War. My grandfather was in Gallipoli with the Scottish horse. My uh, other grandfather was with the Argyles in the trenches of the Somme. In the First World War, the 1418 War, as they talked about, the Great War for Civilization. And of course, my father was in the Second World War as a young 18-year-old, along with many, many others in their 90s now. Some of them, an old managing director friend of mine, well, he's not so old, but his father is 98, and he will be laying a wreath at the ceremony at Birkenhead today. He's an ex-para, uh, a paratrooper, the same as my father was. My father was in Japan at the time of Hiroshima. He was in Norway. He was in India doing guard duty at uh, the end of the empire, freedom at midnight in 1947. And uh, he was in Norway. So there were so many theatres of war. He was also at Nijmegen, dropped in there as a para and a radio operator. Hence the reason his son perhaps has a penchant for radio. But let me just show you one or two um, little photographs here. I don't know if you can see that. That is my father uh, in India in 1946. And also, here is my grandfather uh, having his photograph taken, as so many young men did, before he made his way to the Somme to fight in the Somme in the trenches of the First World War. Here is my father again in the Queen's Own Cameron Highlanders in India. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but that's uh, my father. That's Big Archie. And uh, here um, is one of the ones who I've heard so much about. He was a wonderful man. This is Uncle Colin. And Uncle Colin went down during the Battle of the Atlantic. They were hit by a submarine. He was in an escort destroyer called HMS Harvester. And Uncle Colin was one of the ones who lost his life, who made the ultimate sacrifice. When the knock came to the door of my grandparents to say that this lovely, lovely, lovely young man who was full of fun and who I heard so much about had lost his life in uh, the 11th of March, 1943, during the Battle of the Atlantic. So there goes a great degree of military history, and I've been fortunate enough to meet so many senior military people, generals, major generals, brigadier generals, corporals, privates, captains in the Navy, commanders in the Navy, lieutenant commanders in the Navy, ABs, ratings, 
I've been fortunate to meet senior people in the Royal Air Force, the Air Marshal. I've uh, been fortunate to meet um, pilots, flyers. Um, I come from a long line of naval people who also were torpedoed in the First World War. And that was their fight. Now, the message I would like to uh, impart today, if anything, is to say that in the 1960s, Nikita Khrushchev, the Russian leader at the time, had a word with a young, wet-behind-the-ears American president, a US president called John F. Kennedy, Jack Kennedy. And Nikita Khrushchev said to Jack Kennedy, the one thing I will say to you is please be very, very careful when handling your military. Because if you mobilize the military, you will never be able to stop them. That is no reflection on our military. Our military are many of the finest, finest young men and women that could ever be produced by a great nation. That's our military. But our world leaders, the First World War started because world leaders were poorly educated they did not realize the consequence of their actions. And when the Kaiser mobilized his troops, somebody explained the consequences of this mobilization to him, Kaiser Wilhelm II, who was the grandson of our Queen Victoria. And they said to Willie, you can't stop it now, you have mobilized the troops. He said, but is there no way I can stop them? No, you have mobilized them. And then, of course, our troops were mobilized in the First and Second World War. So not only are there millions and millions of casualties of war, perhaps one of the straightest casualties of war is that of the truth, is that of exactly what happened and where and at what time. And I would just like to say to everyone this morning, when you are standing at the silence for remembrance, if you are standing at the silence for remembrance, think to yourself, what am I remembering? Something that must not happen again. So to the world leaders, you're all well educated now, you have to think of the consequences of your actions. That is a responsible leader. That is a leader of leaders. When you go home, tell them of us and say that for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Think to yourselves about all the souls and hearts and minds of these wonderful, wonderful young people who fell in battle in all wars, but in particular the First and the Second World War, because the casualties were just so enormous, because the consequences of the actions of our world leaders at the time were just so enormous. And let's ensure that our young people of today have many, many bright tomorrows. Let's not just commemorate and remember those who have passed on. Let's remember those who are with us. Let's look to the living and let's wish them a great many tomorrows. For those who made the ultimate sacrifice, we say thank you. They shall grow not old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. But at the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you. And I hope you have a very good morning. Join us tonight at 10 o'clock sharp here on Facebook Live. Ah, I've just got some messages here. Here's one wishing us all a good day 
from Melbourne. Thank you to all of you.